Hey guys, long time no see, but with the playoffs here this weekend and with the national title game on Monday night, I figured I'd try to do the video reports this weekend. Plus, to be honest with you, after four weeks of laying in bed in pain, and frankly, I just couldn't watch HGTV and flip or flop any longer because I'm distraught. I just don't know what to make of this whole controversy with Christina and Tarek breaking up. I don't know who's to blame. I don't know. Did Christina cheat on Tarek with the contractor on the show first? Or did Tarek have something going on with the nanny? What really caused these two to break up? Will the show survive the breakup and the marriage? I mean, because they had great on-stream chemistry. So these are the things that have really bothered me over the past few weeks. And with that in mind, I figured I might as well get out of bed somehow, some way, and do a video report. And I have to be honest with you, today's video report is brought to you by my three favorite pharmaceuticals. And those would be Flexerol, Tramadol, and my favorite, Percocet. Because I gotta be honest with you guys, the best thing about these drugs as far as I'm concerned, and I'm only endorsing these because these are prescribed drugs, these are prescription drugs, is that I get to take two or three of these babies every single day. and. I am definitely under the influence doing this report, as you can probably tell, because I will say, though, however, it has not affected my wit or sarcasm, as you will soon see. But um, it has been an interesting uh, few weeks. The one thing I can say with all the different medical procedures and issues I've had over the past 10 years that going into any operation, I never ask the doctor, the surgeon, what is the outcome? Meaning I don't ask what the recovery is going to be like because I figure it this way. I got to have the surgery anyway. So why ask what the outcome is going to be? I got to live through it anyhow, right? Why know what's going to happen going into the surgery? Because when I wake up, tell me about it then. I never ask. And uh, so this time when I came out of the surgery, you know, I was told it was going to be like a four to six week recovery. And I thought, hey, Considering the agony that I was in, and I'm telling you, I have never been in this type of pain in my life going into the surgery. I mean, the three weeks beforehand, it was pure hell that I wouldn't wish on any of you. So going into the surgery, I mean, coming out of it, finding out four to six weeks, I thought, okay, I can live with it. So I go for my two-week checkup, two weeks afterwards, naturally, and then I'm told it was going to be six to eight weeks recovery from that point forward. Now, I may be doped up. My math skills are still there, and I'm thinking to myself, hold it, hold it, hold it. Two weeks after the surgery, four to six weeks after the surgery, I was told after two weeks, I'm still six to week, eight weeks out. Wow, this is going to be a long recovery. It'll be March Madness until I am up and around again. So, uh, you know, but hey, it only hurts when I get into bed, when I get out of bed, when I turn, when I move. When I tried to put this tie on today, half-assed, half, half you know, it only hurts constantly. But again, my favorite drugs will certainly be here to save the day. Oh, by the way, let me just give an endorsement, a product endorsement today. If you happen to have an elderly person in your residence or an elderly relative or somebody who has some mobility issues, let me just recommend my favorite tool. And that, folks, is the grabber. You cannot go anywhere without the grabber. Let me tell you what's the greatest thing about the grabber. When you have a lack of mobility, you can't reach that remote control, get the grabber. You can't get your pill bottle, get the grabber. Can't reach that bottle of soda on the uh, credenza, get the grabber. Your mouse drops on the floor when you're trying to type, get the grabber. The grabber is just one of those things. You see the commercials on the TV all the time like I used to and you used to think, <laughs> I'm never going to need the grabber. Who needs those stupid things called the grabber? I need the grabber. Let me tell you, the greatest thing about the grabber is it's there for you. It becomes your best friend. But here's the word of warning. Don't buy just one because I found out the hard way. Here's the problem. When the grabber falls, you're screwed. Because if you don't have another grabber to pick up the grabber that fell, you're waiting for hours until your wife gets home or somebody gets home to pick up the grabber for you. Because otherwise, you're sitting there, you're in bed, the grabber's on the floor, and you're going, this ain't good. Because the grabber, it's not like the Jedi mind trick. Think Jay and Silent Bob. You know, it's not like, hey, it's going to come up to me. It's going to lift off the ground. No, you're not using your legs to kind of get your toes around the grabber. No, 
you got to have a second grabber to get the first grabber when the first grabber falls on the ground. So that's my advice. Buy two grabbers. Okay, let's talk football. Because I don't know how much more you or I can take in doing this video report. And on a serious note, guys, I'll try to do the video reports. Listen, I can't tell you if I'll be here every day, and I seriously doubt it. But when I feel good, <laughs> yeah, when I feel good in March, I'll be here every day. On the days when I feel somewhat good, when I feel half good, I'll be here doing the videos. Um, let's talk about today's games. Um, let's talk about some wild card statistics from an ATS viewpoint. Um, you know, let's go back to the wild card rounds back to 1978. We're going to exclude the, uh, the fiasco of the 1982 strike season. I think I was betting USFL football back in 1982. I think so. I think I was betting the USFL, Jim Gam, Jim Kelly and the Houston Gamblers back then. I think I was. Yeah, 1982, Houston Gamblers made me a ton of money. I think it was 1983 when Donald Trump uh, came along and ruined that damn league because he wanted to play football in the fall with the New Jersey Generals. What the hell ever happened to that Trump guy? God, he really screwed up that football league. Hope he doesn't screw up other things. Just a thought. Must be the drugs. Anyway, uh, if you exclude that strike season, there's been 126 total games. And what I find kind of interesting is that 44.4% of them have been decided by two touchdowns or more. So 44% of the games haven't even been close. Two touchdown or more margins. 57% of them have been decided by eight points or more. What's the line in the Seattle-Detroit game? Ding, ding, ding. You got it. Eight points. Now, 27 of them have been decided by one to three points. 27 of them have been decided by four to seven points. All the other numbers are kind of inconsequential. But Again, 44% of them decided by 14 points or more. 57% of them decided by eight points or more. Um, the other st significant stat that I found here is that one to three point dogs are 12 games over 500. All the other numbers, nothing. Like, let's look at the Raiders game today. That line has gone three and a half to four points, right? Dogs of three and a half to six and a half points are 21, 21, and one against the spread. No advantage. So let's talk about this Raiders game today, okay? Uh, Houston, three and a half to four point favorite at home. Total sitting at 36 and a half. Yes, the Texans are seven and one straight up at home this season. Brock Osweiler, the $72 million man, gets his second chance for redemption. Let's go back to the Mexico City game, that Monday night game, when the Texans carried the lead into the fourth quarter before the Raiders got the two late touchdowns from Derek Carr to win that game. Osweiler had one of his best games of the season and probably his best game of the entire season in a road game that year, 26 to 39 for 243 yards. Raiders offense, even with Derek Carr, in that game, only 325 yards. Why did they struggle? Because the Texans did a great job at stopping their ground game in that contest. Raiders only averaged 1.5 yards per carry. Now, they're going with a rookie quarterback, making his first NFL start today in Connor Cook. They're going to have to establish the run. If they couldn't run in Mexico City, why should they be expected to run today in Houston. A good thing going for Houston today is that Lamar Miller is back from that sprained ankle. He probably could have played in the season finale, but they kept him on the sideline to make sure that he was 100% healthy. And of course, he had a heavy workload this season. So I think you're going to see a very conservative game plan from the Texans and looking for them to give Lamar Miller a hell of a boatload of carries today. The other thing that is you got to think that Romeo Cornell, is going to dial up a lot of blitzes, a lot of stunts, a lot of schemes to try to confuse the rookie cornerback, go, quarterback going for the Raiders and Connor Cook today. Why not? Cornell's been around the block a hell of a lot of years, got a lot of experience. Now, the Texans' pass rush is not nearly as good as it was when J.J. Watt was in there, but it's not bad. And the other thing is, is that the Raiders... Don't stop the run well. They're a dreadful team defensively. Against the run, they give up 4.5 yards a carry. So this is also a game that Bill O'Brien better win. You know, we remember last year in the wild card game at home when Brian Hoyer, Mr. Five turnover, 
They lost to the Chiefs 30 to nothing. You know, the Texans aren't going anywhere, but they better win this game, don't you think? So I got to go with Houston here. I think it'll be a low scoring game. Um, and it's going to be damn close in terms of the margin of victory. But I just don't see how you don't bet the way uh, the Texans in this game. I, I don't get it. Did the Raiders deliver last week at Denver with a better quarterback at the helm? No. I got to go with Texans in this game. And that's going to be your free pick. The other game's hard. You know, Seattle, an eight-point favorite. Seattle no-showed against Arizona. Well, they showed up in the second half, but they certainly no-showed in the first half. Now, true, 7-1 and straight up at home this season. Great playoff team over the years. 5-0 uh, and straight up at home since 2010 in the playoffs. They've got the 12th man, blah, blah, blah. Uh, Detroit, three straight losses to end the season. Um, you know, they've won, they, being the Seahawks, have won nine straight home uh, playoff games, four by double digits. Uh, what, Detroit is 1-11 and 11 in the playoffs since the AFL and the NFL, uh, NF, NFL and the AFL merged back in 1970 with seven straight losses. Eh, I mean, I'd lean a little toward Detroit, but that's, uh, I'm sorry, toward Seattle, but that's an ugly number at eight. So again, I like the uh, Texans in this one, and that would be your free play in the NFL. Let's talk a little college basketball here. I like Texas Arlington, minus the nine and a half points at Texas State. Texas Arlington, a team that I wrote a lot last year. I'm going to ride them here again. They have won 11 in a row since three consecutive losses early in the season in games two, three, and four to Minnesota, Florida, Gulf Coast, and Arkansas. Nothing to be ashamed of in during this 11-game winning streak. They beat Texas. They beat St. Mary's, both by double-digit margins. Now, the Bobcats of Texas State are coming off a 60-53 to loss to Coastal Carolina at home. That snapped the three-game winning streak. Now, Coastal Carolina had lost its three previous games. The previous game prior to beating um, uh, Texas State, that was a 90 to 69 loss to, you guessed it, Texas Arlington. Texas State 0 and 3 against Texas Arlington a year ago. And Texas Arlington a year ago played all three of those games without their best player, Kevin Herbie. Now, he's the 6'9 senior forward. He suffered a torn ACL last year. This year, he's back. He's healthy. He's averaging 14.7 rebounds. He's coming off a 21.12 rebound performance against App State. Um, Look at the difference between these two teams with their RPI. Texas Arlington, number 31. Uh, Texas State, 322. So I think Texas Arlington is the play in this contest, and I'm going to go with them as your complimentary college basketball release. Thought about going with Michigan State against Penn State as well, but that game being played at the Bluster in Philadelphia, I think Michigan State is definitely the better team, but Penn State is in desperate straits here after uh, losing once more, blowing a double-digit lead at Michigan in its last game. Being a neutral site court, although it is in Philadelphia, I think it's a difficult spot. I do think the Spartans are better, but just don't want to touch that one. So again, I'll ride with Texas Arlington as your free play along with the Texans of Houston. And that'll be your complimentary selections for Saturday. Uh, again, I may be here on Sunday. I may not. We'll have to see how I feel. And I wish you well, guys. And I'll talk to you again soon. Good luck, everybody.